So, agenda, meeting the City Report of Health, Monday, September 12, 2016. Selectman Chambers, Town Hall, 6 p.m. Uh, I will take a motion to open the meeting and accept the agenda. Uh, make a motion to open the meeting and accept the agenda of Monday, September 12, 2016. Wow. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Scheduled items. First up, discuss vote. Title Five variance request, 111 Indian Trail. And we have, and if you could just speak into the microphone so everybody can hear you on TV, yeah. so on and so forth. You want yeah. a chair, Jeff? Yeah. Well, Sorry. Take any chair. Any chair. <laughs> My, my name is Jeff, Jeff Astor with Morris Engineering. Um, so this is a septic system repair. It's a 111 Indian Trail. Um, the property is pretty good size. It's about eight tenths of an acre. Um, however, the only possible location for the septic is right here because there is significant ledge throughout the, the, the rear of the property. So the house sits right here. It's a four bedroom house. The driveway comes in here. And um, for this design, we did two park tests in the front yard. We they came back as a loamy sands with groundwater down. No, it's not mm -hmm. Where's where's the beach road? It's off of Gannett Road. Oh, Gannett. Okay. 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 Almost to Hatherley. Yeah. Well, next to next to border, I guess is the closest. Yeah, it connects yeah. Gannett to border. Yeah. So we're proposing a uh, hoop treatment tank, a pump chamber, and then a geoflow drip field. And so that is an IA, uh, an IA technology, both the hoot system and the drip system. And by doing that, we're allowed to reduce the groundwater separation. We can reduce it from four feet to two feet. We're asking for a reduction from four feet to two and a half feet. And we're also taking a size reduction. It's a 34% size, size reduction in order to fit in that area. And we're also asking for three local upgrades. Uh, one being the, um, a SIV analysis. It was too wet at the time to do a perk test. Second being a setback reduction from the property line. Typically, we, tr we keep the system 10 feet off the property line. In this case, it's only five feet. So we did have to notify the affected abutters, which in this case is the town being Indian Trail. And we're also asking for a local upgrade, local upgrade for the setback from the water supply line to any, any septic components. Typically, we like 10 feet. In this case, we're only able to provide five, and by it'll it'll provide the same trauma, same means of protection because the water line is going to be sleeved. So it's going to be a new water line installed right here, and it'll be sleeved in a pressure tight pipe. So you sleeve that in a pressure tight pipe and then put cement in it and stuff on the ends. Yeah. yeah. Is this system in total disrepair now? Is that what is going on here? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when did you do the perk test? July. July 11th. And it was still too wet? Yeah, I didn't do them myself, but we always tr would prefer to do a perk test. Mm. And they the the sink is without a drought, as far as I know. Oh, um, you know why? It's because we had fill down um, to three and a half, four feet. Oh, it's filled? Yeah. Uh, It's a four bedroom house. No increase. Right. So the uh, the property lines to the street, right? Yes. Yes. It is, is the, we check with the yep. W yep, the, and they're all cool with it. So the board of selectmen received the public notification. Um, so they gave us a copy of the letter. Um, they kept the green the green card. Um, I inquired with the DPW director. Um, he, of course, understands the limitations. Would prefer that the water line be, you know, the mi the minimum ten foot distance. But, it will be um, but you know, does does recognize that it would be sleeved if it does need to be closer than ten feet. Um, he did not have a concern about it being closer to Indian Trail. He checked the he checked the water lines on the street, and it didn't seem to be problematic for him. Right, and the grading's not going to cause an issue out in the street or any of that, so they looked at all that. He did. He, yeah. he, yeah, he took the plan today um, to take a look at it uh, in advance of the meeting. There's, there's no grading in the street? Yeah, well, no, I know, but it's the right way, as you know. Yeah, no, no, no grading. It's not going to affect any future or whatever. Uh, no, you can see the system are actually not altering the, uh, the ground very significantly. Looks like it's coming up from here about a foot at the highest point. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, 
conventional system would be a very large amount. That's really the only option in this piece of wood plant. Huh? Yeah. That's really the only option. I see if there's any public on it. Uh, are there any abutters that are uh, close to actually the only the town of the abutters? So I'm guessing that the homeowners are here? Correct. No? Um, All right. Or the buyer, I'm the buyer He's from here, but... Oh, you're the buyer? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any questions, Any comments? questions, anything you have? Uh, Concerns, questions? No, I don't think we've been through it with, uh, with, with everybody involved. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I make a motion to approve the plan. All right. Yeah, you uh, where am I reading that? Move to approve right here. Yeah. Underlined. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Move to approve the variance requested for relief from the required minimum setback requirement of 10 feet between the property line and the soil absorption system. It is the opinion of the Board of Health that the applicant has satisfied the requirements of 310 CMR 15.410. Thus, the SAS may be installed as requested to be within 5.5 feet of the property line. This variance is granted. However, it can be reviewed, modified, or revoked by the Board of Health at any time in the future. All those in favor? Yeah, I'm in favor. I don't know why we need all that in there. It's just a septic system, but... All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Jeff. So approved. All right, thank you. So approved. So, I'll, I'll follow up later this week with written confirmation of the approval, so you have it for your record. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So, next up on our agenda, discuss, vote, Title five Variance 18, Hot Block. It looks like we have a lot of for this one. <laughs> so might we begin by um, similarly confirming that both abutters were notified we didn't receive a copy of the abutters notification letter or the green cards uh, yep. Let's see. Uh, one of them was the uh, neighbor next door the other one was the town right and the town needs to be notified was the town not notified? I don't think we have to slip it in. Um, thought we had. Um, but I don't have a copy of the slip. Um, if if we don't have confirmation that both the butters were notified, we can't proceed until both have been notified. Is there a way to check in and see? I realize it's six o'clock, not four o'clock. Even for the town, it's correct. It's just like the the previous hearing. The only town, the only abutter was the town, and the town was formally notified, which uh, is a requirement. Just out of curiosity, uh, when people notify the town, does it go to the clerk's office, and the clerk distributes that to other boards? So in this case, uh, the previous case, yeah. um, the notification went to the Board of Selectmen's office. Mm -hmm. The Board of Selectmen came down to let us know that they had received notification. Okay. And then I inquired with the impacted potential department, which was DPW. Right, so if the Selectmen have an issue, they can say Planning Board, Board of Health, Conservation, right. hey, do you guys know about this? All right. No, I just, I, I'm yep. just never been clarified on that. Yep, but I, 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 checked specifically with DPW yeah. since they would obviously be the one responsible for maintaining right. the issues with the road. So unfortunately, so. since all, all abutters weren't notified, I don't think we can have a public hearing. We can't. That's, um, okay. That's quite unfortunate. Sorry about that. Do you want to take a moment to see if you can check no, and get documentation? Be in here. Um, there's no way we can. We can't proceed with the hearing that. without without confirmation. No, I don't. Uh, I don't think. I don't think we ever. Uh, I don't think we ever did. Um, 
I don't know, a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago. So if you don't have this back yet, then I'm guessing you never receive it. Well, even just the the initial card, show, yeah, the top one, just showing that it was sent. Because um, I know the from experience, the green ones sometimes are delayed coming back. Um, we can. Not sure how that happened, but. Well, so then might have next. been clarification. It might not have never been sent. Thinking that the board of health would have been the town. That's the only thing I could think right, of. Right, that seen. might have been what it was. Well, I mean, what what can happen is is um, you got to make sure you know we've got it scheduled two weeks from today. You got to make sure that somebody does this tomorrow. So okay. If it gets done, and then we'll put you back on the um, <coughs> on the agenda for two weeks. Folks, it is it is the procedure. So, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, it came in for all for not tonight. Um, we have to we have to make sure that the abutter and even if the town does not show up, we have to make sure that they were notified in order to proceed with the hearing uh, with any public hearing. Um, so we do apologize for that. I know it delays another two weeks and. And I know it's frustrating. I do apologize. So we can schedule you first up. I think it's 925 is two weeks from today, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 20, 26, 24? Uh, 12, 26. 26. So I'm guessing it wasn't sent because that was sent the yeah. first. But I'm guessing it probably would have sent both at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it is, it is, every, every abutter has to be notified um, so they can be present or not, even though it is the town. So who would have been here if? And nobody, it, it's, it's a new point at that point, just like in the last one when Chen said that if nobody shows up, nobody shows up. But like who would show up from the town though? So, uh, like so more than likely it would be the DPW director yeah. or the DPW director would provide me with comments uh, or concerns if he himself wouldn't show up. He would provide them to me just just as he did for the previous one right. um and then likewise as um russell had indicated you know if for partic some particular reason another board or committee felt as though they needed to weigh in um they would have that opportunity to do so okay. so so we can schedule you for um first the first hearing on uh, two weeks from today which sounds like it's the 26th okay. all right Sorry, folks. I know you guys came in and, and took time out of your day to come in. We do apologize for that. Thank you. That's so because of Poplar Ave, correct? That's two. the town abutter. 18 Poplar Ave, yeah. The actual abutter is the road, though. Right, so it's number fourteen. No, I know. So, so there's yeah. two there's two abutters for this property that would be impacted by property line setbacks. One is this couple who owns fourteen Poplar Ave, and the other is the town. The both, town, which is the road. Right. right. So right. both abutters under Mass DEP regulation need to be notified. Um, so we're awaiting the town. You know, the town to be notified it needs to be ten days prior to a hearing. Um, so you know, we'll be able to make it in time for. The next meeting on the twenty sixth. Right. Yeah. So I assume I'll receive another piece of mail, sort of by meant just with the new date and time. Yes. And then you can, you know, like you like you had done before, you can follow up with me. Um, but you can at least for now make the assumption that two weeks from today it'll be the very first hearing up at six o'clock. Because okay. I'll put it since it was scheduled for today, I'll have it first up in two weeks. Okay. okay. Thank you, folks. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Can I get to ask now? Yeah. The abutter is the town because it's on the street. Mm -hmm. I clar I clarified with DEP because we had gotten a rash of these where the abutter in some cases it was just the street. Right. Um, I clarified in advance that in fact the town needed to be notified and DEP confirmed that now to be the case. Is a variance too? to do with the street or it's just the fact that the house is on the street but so so any any property line variance any abutter needs to be notified gotcha. and because the street is owned by the town the town needs to be and that's a property line because it's a property line that, you got that it. Yep, yep, you got and it. that that makes a lot more sense because I, I some we have and some we haven't that makes sense 
Correct. That's right. Because I, I, but that makes sense. Right. That, so, so in this particular right. case, and that protects with with DPW, especially to make sure that there's no interference in the street. With they drains put a future, or whatever. Uh, the drains, the water line, future right. sidewalk, grading, whatever. No, that makes sense. That makes 100 percent sense. Actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll plan for two weeks. We'll plan for two weeks from Sorry today. Have a good night. Okay, next up, new business. The elect chairman of board, the chairman of the board. Well, that can't happen because there's only two. Right, right. So I'll so forward that to the next and meeting. She's in here on the board. So I just, as I have done each season, I believe I gave you folks a packet. Um, oh, maybe I didn't. I will pass down the packets. Um, so each season I give you just a summary of um, how the beach sampling went, um, how the beach closures went, um, and this year if there can be, thank you, if there can be a potential upside to the lack of rain and storm water, this was the only upside to that. Um, so all of the beaches were sampled um, once a week for 12 weeks. Um, I did not. I did not collect the samples. Um, we had the capable services of the lab um, that is the state contracted lab to do the analysis. They also did the collection, so we were able to um, utilize their services um, for both, um, which absolutely saved a, a lot of time on my part. Um, and we worked really, really well together to coordinate getting the results out. Um, You'll see on the summary sheet on the top that uh, the only beach that had to be closed was Lighthouse. Um, there were two closures, one on 817 and one on 831. The 817 was closed out of an abundance of caution. We were able to collect a sample on that second day. Um, if you collect two samples on consecutive days, you don't have to close that particular beach to swimming until you get two elevated results. Um, but because of the nature, you know, the, the children that use that beach, we closed that beach anyway for swimming out of an abundance of caution. We did get um, clean results, cleaner results the next day, so we reopened it. Um, and, uh, just for clarification, Lighthouse Beach is on the inside of the harbor? It yes. is. Mm -hmm. So it's really is that little, uh, a little inlet. Little inlet yeah. And then the here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think pollution there could be seaweed derived? So each of the closures, there was seaweed. Um, there were not recent storm events. Um, so, to some extent, I can't really say that it was it was storm water related. Um, there, there is a large number of birds that congregates in that shallow water. It's easy, easy pickings for crabs and, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there are also, you know, lots of users. There are lots of young folks who use it. Um, there are a lot of boats that come through um, that can stir up anything that may be in the water. Um, so I can't point to a source. I don't know what the sources no, are. but I, I think you um, nailed it with the birds, especially but, if they congregate there. And uh, I, I know a few years back, uh, we had problems at Sand Hills, and we felt it was related with the seaweed. To seaweed. Yeah. And each and each day that we did have the closures, they did note on the sample report that there was seaweed present mm -hmm. um, at the time of sampling. So it, it very well could contribute. Um, and the, and the water temperatures were really elevated. So water temperatures elevated allow bacterial to grow, mm -hmm. um, and that area doesn't flush as well as say a minot or a hummer rock where it's wide open where the right. samples are collected so i think right if you get a uh, westerly wind that could hold the water right in especially if right. there's a uh, right. wind westerly wind that right. yeah, it would hold that top water in right right yeah right um, yeah, just, you know, like to uh, think about it before we have a problem, and that seems to make sense in my head, that, especially the birds. What did the life growth work like, six weeks? 
Uh, I believe the lifeguards started just prior to 4th of July and then they worked until Labor Day phasing out of various beaches based on returns to school and staffing levels. So I think some no, of the Hummer beaches... Hummer Rock was uh, fully staffed. Yeah, Hummer Rock was the, longest, was the longest at eight weeks. Um, and then I think uh, Egypt, they lost their lifeguards like the Thursday or Friday before Labor Day. Um, and then who was before that? I think Minot was right before that. Sand Hills was the first one to lose their lifeguards. Um, and I think they they did that based on usage, you know, average usage um, uh, and typical closures. This year we were really lucky with Peggy that we didn't have closures. Typically they like to staff Peggy as long as they can during the summer, but if there's closures, obviously it makes sense to move the lifeguards to a beach that you can swim. So in this case, I think Peggy was also staffed longer than it had been last year. Um, but Lighthouse, Lighthouse is an interesting um, uh, beach this year. Um, the second closure, which um, basically was initiated after our last sampling for the week, for the season, so our sample was on August 31st. Um, we not only had single sample exceedances, but also geomean exceedances. So consistently through the summer on non-rain events, we had um, elevated levels of bacteria, and the geomean um, limit is 35. It's much lower than the single sample result. So we were consistently during non-rain events seeing bacteria above 35. So unfortunately, when Lighthouse Beach closed to swimming, um, after the sampling on August 31st, it was closed to the seat for the season for swimming because there was not a way to sample again um, in enough frequency without rain in order to get um, the concentrations low enough because that's when we actually did start to get rain was that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a little bit here and there. So um, overall, a really good season for for beaches for a variety of reasons, but um, okay. particularly for us. Um, that's all I had. Okay. Other business, administrative invoice approvals. There's some invoices to sign in. There's not too many. Just and meeting minutes approvals once again. I think we have to wait again. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, sir. Did someone do it, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think there are any with just the two of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can ad lib funny things that he might have said. <laughs> I don't think so. So we'll we'll move those to next. We'll move those to next. I did. All right, so we'll revisit those um, at the next meeting as well. So, so, so already scheduled for the next meeting is 18 Poplar Ave, the variance request, elect the chairman of the board, and the meeting minutes. All right, Take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All those in favor, aye. Adjourn the meeting.